I went, she said, oh, if you ever want to drop, because I said, she goes, if you ever want to drop five pounds, this is good. Five pounds? Her doctor's an advocate for a drug that you inject into your stomach to lose five pounds. That's Hollywood for you. I didn't even know I was on it. First of all, she didn't even know she was on it. Now, that doesn't surprise me, because this woman's been on more drugs than you can shake a stick at. I mean, really? She's been on so many drugs, admittedly. Is that shocking? I didn't even know I was on it. It's pretty funny. Realizing it. I didn't even know I was on it. Ozempic, Ozempic, Ozempic. They say it makes you skinny fat. They say it eats away your muscle and destroys your skin. And we'll find out if it's the way to be thin. Hello, America, FBI and CIA agents and fellow cult members. Welcome to Culture Club USA. I'm DeBrava. Today, we are going to talk about the latest weight loss fad in America that is being pushed by celebrity culture, most prevalently in Hollywood. Some say that it could be the single most dangerous, addictive new craze in America. So, is Ozempic the new Viagra? Let's find out. So, the first clip we're going to play is a clip of E! News. Let's get into it. Ossie Schroeder, the reality TV star who recently appeared on Alex Cooper's Call Her Daddy podcast, shared that she wants to try Ozempic after giving birth. Oh, my God. I feel like I really want to try it when I give birth. <laughs> You're like, I want to go on it now, but I am pregnant, so I'm no, going to wait. No, the amount of times I've researched this being like, I mean, I think it's safe and healthy. Like, I think it's good for you. It's like taking vitamins. <laughs> However, this... Oh, hold on. That's Asi Schroeder. Now, that's interesting because why would this girl need to go on anything to lose weight? She's always in incredible shape. I mean, so you're pregnant and you're having a baby. You can't bounce back into shape. That's ridiculous. Taking vitamins. <laughs> However, this next star has quite the contrary opinion on the medication. Game of Thrones alum Sophie Turner was not shy with her take on Ozempic and its advertisements. Back in April, she posted an Instagram story that featured a tweet containing two Ozempic ads. One photo read, one shot to lose weight, while another offered similar text, a weekly shot to lose weight. Turner added her own commentary, writing, WTF. And Ozempic is no... Well, she'll be canceled soon. <laughs> ...laughing matter, according to comedian Chelsea Handler. Chelsea, who also appeared on Call Her Daddy back in January, shared that she was given the medication without realizing it. I didn't even know I was on it. And added that her... <laughs> First of all, she didn't even know she was on it. Now, that doesn't surprise me because this woman's been on more drugs than you can shake a stick at. I mean, really? She's been on so many drugs, admittedly. <laughs> Is that shocking? I didn't even know I was on it. It's pretty funny. Realizing it. I didn't even know I was on it. And added that her doctor was an advocate for the drug. I went, she said, oh, if you ever want to drop, because I said, she goes, if you ever want to drop five pounds, this is good. Five pounds? Her doctor's an advocate for a drug that you inject into your stomach to lose five pounds. That's Hollywood for you. But while she tried Ozempic, Handler noted that she didn't like how it made her feel. And I came back from a vacation and I injected myself with it. And I went to lunch with like a girlfriend a few days later and she's like, I'm not really eating anything. I'm so nauseous. I'm on Ozempic. And I was like, I'm kind of nauseous too, but I had come back from Spain. I thought I was jet lagged. Ultimately, Handler stopped using the drug because it wasn't medically necessary for her, adding that she gave away the remaining doses to... Pre now they say it does something to your skin. Well, that may be evidence of it. Friends. As for celebs who are clapping back at internet trolls, accusing them of being on it, look no further because Khloe Kardashian is here to halt all the rumors. When commenters on Instagram speculated that she was taking Ozempic, she clapped back, saying to not discredit her years of working out and that she gets up five days a week at 6 a.m. to train. The apple doesn't fall far from the reality TV tree because Kyle Richards got real about claims that she was taking the medication after her followers on social media took notice of her weight loss earlier this year. Richards wrote back to one user under one of her Instagram posts where she shared a pic of herself and her girlfriend's post-workout claiming that she is not on Ozempic and to stop spreading lies. That wouldn't be the last time the Bravo star shot down the rumors, reiterating that she is not taking the medication under a January 16th post on Instagram. As for another Real Housewife sharing her experience on Ozempic. Boy, Ozempic must be, you know, sponsoring the housewives because 
Are they all on it? Dolores Catania, the reality TV star, admitted that she was taking Ozempic to lose weight prior to filming the season 13 reunion. During an episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, she confirmed she had been taking the medication because she didn't want to be, quote, looking any bigger than anyone else at the taping. So, Dolores, how long have you been on the Ozempic? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks? Yes. Yeah. It's How's actually it Bonjoro. It's another... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the amped up version. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. You're yeah, that's the fast forward to Skinny Bill. What kind of question is that for Andy Cohen to be asking? How long have you been on Ozempic? First of all, the thing that's crazy to me is that I haven't seen one person thus far that needs to be on any kind of medication to lose weight. I mean, none of them are overweight. Absolutely none of them. And according to all the research I've read, this is for people who are obese. I mean, hello, this is, this is what, this is Hollywood. I mean, this is crazy. Housewives looking like this, pushing this. Mm -hmm. Reunions in two weeks. Right. According to NBC News, Ozempic and its sister drug, Wagovi, are, quote, the same drug, semaglitude, but come in different doses. They work as appetite suppressants and help control blood sugar levels by prompting the body to release insulin. Now, this drug, though, just so we're all clear, it's for people that are diabetic. That's what it's for. It's for people that are diabetic. It's a drug that's used to control you're in your, your, your blood sugar. Okay. They're using it to lose weight. Wagovi is approved as a weight loss drug for adults who have obesity. Obesity. Have you seen any, have, has there been any obese person on here on E? Really? I mean, uh, this is, like I said, are they sponsoring it? I, I don't understand this. Every housewife from, you know, uh, the housewives of the planet Mars is on this drug to lose five pounds. I don't call five pounds being obese. Interesting. Well, that's E! News. Now we're going to get into the next clip, which is actually... Uh, a person that she's a very big YouTuber. She has over two and a half million subscribers. Her name is Spooky Boo. And she had a very bad experience on Ozempic. Let's 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 hear her story. I started Ozempic last year, kind of before it had really blown up all over the place. And now it seems like people will do anything to get their hands on it. Just so you know as well, not to get her off. Um What she's saying is very true. It's like impossible to get your hands on this drug and it's extremely expensive. So just saying. Before I had started it, a friend had told me about it. I had seen her probably two months ahead of time and she was like, yeah, like it's really helping me. My eating is great. I'm, I'm losing all this weight. I'm, everything is better. So months later when I got my prescription, I ran into her and I said, hey, I ended up getting prescribed Ozempic. And she looked at me and she just said, ooh, don't take it. And I was like, no, like, no I'm going to do this. Like, <laughs> it's going to help me control my blood sugar and it's, it's going to help me relearn how to eat and how I look at food. And I had this. Hold on a second. Okay. Clearly, you know, this poor girl is diabetic because it's going to help her control her blood sugar. But her saying that a medication is going to help her relearn how to eat. Who's telling these people this? How is a pill or an injection going to help you relearn how to eat? That's a bit absurd, don't you think? This big expectation of it in my mind. And she said to me, I felt that way for a while too. But then I was going to literally unsubscribe from life. And I really. Let's bring that back. I felt that way for a while, too. But then I was going to literally unsubscribe from life. And I really didn't take that to heart. And I started the medication, and to start, it was great. My sugars were controlled. I was feeling better. I really didn't lose any weight, but I found myself just... It was easier to make better decisions and to not binge eat the way that I did. Okay, so her friend, Spooky Boo that she ran into, who was on the drug, 
told her that being on Ozempic made her literally want to unsubscribe from life. But she still took it. I'm curious to see where this goes. If somebody told me that they were on something and it made them feel like they wanted to unsubscribe from life, I'm going to go with, let's find an alternative. Really. It was time to up my dose. I'd spoken to a doctor and they're like, yes, let's, let's slowly take it up. So I decided to do 0.75. So her friend has told her that she wanted to unsubscribe from life. And this one over here, Spooky Boo, is upping her dose. <laughs> this is vanity. Okay. This isn't about blood sugar or anything like that. This is, I really want to lose weight, but I really don't want to put the work in to do it. Let's be real here. There's no medication that is going to teach us how to eat properly. Okay. Only we can do that. And we already know how to do that. We all know what it takes to lose weight. It's calories in, calories out. It's exercise. Okay. That week that I did 0.75, I don't know how I made it out. With Ozempic, you do get, you know, tummy upset. You're not hungry. You're kind of nauseous. You're either constipated or you're going to the washroom all the time. And these are things that I already dealt with in my own life. But this symptom, no matter how much I Googled, I really couldn't find. So I'm like, it's not at that. But this week, I was not me. I found myself walking out of complete conversations into the bathroom where I would hyperventilate, shake on the ground, throw up, cry in the shower, but have a rational thought knowing that this isn't me and this isn't what I could feel like. And usually I could pull myself out of this feeling or out of this situation, but I couldn't. And that's what scared me. And it was the thoughts that I were having that didn't feel like they were my own. Um, that's disturbing. That's one of the most disturbing things that I've ever watched. So you have... Bravo, Andy Cohen, and the housewives of planet Mars who need to lose five pounds to film the reunion show, pushing a drug to someone like this, poor thing, okay, whose doctor is pushing this on her, who literally can't function and wants to kill herself. This is where we're at. I mean, where, where is the doctor that is saying, okay, Spooky Boo or whatever her name, real name is, um, let's get you on a regime. Let's get you on a program. Let's, let's get you some uh, uh, personal training, you know, some physical therapy. Let's get you a nutritionist. Let's really teach you how to learn how to eat properly. But no, let's just give you a drug, you know, to help control your, you know, your, your blood sugar. And then up the dose, skyrocket the dose, because it'll make you lose weight too. And don't worry about anything. It'll, your brain will just rewire itself from the injection and you'll figure out how to re relearn to eat. This is ridiculous. This poor girl, I actually feel very sorry for her. She's crying. And it's been hard to have to admit to people. And it's been hard to have to admit to the people who are like, oh, but just keep on. I'm like, I don't think you understand. This is life or death for me. Because if I have to exist feeling the way that I am feeling right now, I don't think I could exist. Do you hear what she's saying? Bring that back. She's saying she cannot live on this drug. This is what this is doing to her. Listen to her own words. This is nuts. Why she wouldn't get off of it immediately herself, I don't know. No common sense. It's hard to have to admit to the people who are like, oh, but just keep on. I'm like, I don't think you understand. This is life or death for me. Because if I have to exist feeling the way that I am feeling right now, I don't think I could exist. So I've been drastically, drastically pulling down my dose. I'm down to 0.3 and I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm not going to take another shot. When you Google this medication, they talk about a lot of symptoms. They even talk about some extreme ones like getting really bad pancreatitis or getting really bad gallbladder issues or everyone's going to, you know, live differently with it. But in this past week, I will be honest with you and I am so truthful when I say that Ozempic almost took my life. Wow. 
and I know that's a big thing to say, but that is my personal experience, and it wasn't influenced by any, I don't do any recreational substances, I don't drink, I don't take anything else that would affect me in this way at all whatsoever, but I feel like all I'm seeing are these commercials like pushing and pushing and pushing this drug, and we're already dealing with such a mental health crisis as it is, and I don't know why this isn't being spoken about. Because the way that I have felt in this past, you know, couple months is not a way I have ever felt in my life. That is incredibly sad. Incredibly sad. Um, I feel very sorry for her. She needs guidance. And here's the thing. People who are morbidly obese, okay, are eating for very different reasons. There's a deeper underlying issue here, okay? It's a protection of some sort. You're not going to cure that with an injection. It's not going to happen. And her in this position, that's a result of Hollywood pushing this on people who actually really need help, truly need help. Very sad. Okay, the next clip. This is a fitness instructor. Uh, Her name is... Shailene Johnson, and uh, she's a fitness expert, and she's got some things to say about Ozempic. Let's see what she has to say coming from the fitness world's perspective. It's going to be interesting. Today, we're talking about weight loss injections such as Ozempic, Manjaro, and Wagovi. And this is the part that I don't think a lot of health professionals and fitness professionals and people who are in the diet and health space are talking about. But this dramatic weight loss that we've seen people have just tremendous success on these drugs, I think it needs to tell a lot of us how to do things differently. You probably, like a lot of other people, are wondering if some of these celebrities and reality TV stars and even fitness professionals who have had rapid weight loss, are they using some of these weight loss injections. And if they are, why aren't they coming clean and and admitting it? For example, in the case of Kelly Clarkson. Wow, Kelly Clarkson. It's rumored, it's rumored, okay. For example, in the case of Kelly Clarkson, who says she's not using weight loss injections, is it possible to lose that much? Now that's some serious weight loss. That's, That's a whole different person. She looks great, good for her. Is it possible to lose that much weight without them? Why is the price of this drug so high? What is the mechanism? And with this worldwide shortage is... Worldwide shortage and the price is outrageous. Let's, let's see where this goes. Is it safe for people who are now turning to uh, pharmacies that are making a compound version of Ozempic, of Wagovi, of all of these weight loss injections? Are these things safe? What do we know about the long-term use of them? And why is it opinions and judgment around using weight loss injections are so divisive? Like, why do people care so much? And is it appropriate? Is it the easy way out? Is it truly a disease to have obesity? And will- First of all, do you hear what she's saying? She's saying that... This is in such demand and they can't keep up with it that pharmacies are making a compound version of it. And is it being regulated? They're making a compound version of something that's an injection. That's how bad people want this. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. A disease to have obesity and will the people who are taking these drugs need to take them indefinitely and this is the part that i don't think a lot of health professionals and fitness professionals and people who are in the diet and health space are talking about but this dramatic weight loss that we've seen people have just tremendous success on these drugs i think it needs to tell a lot of us how to do things differently i'm going to tell you this when a group of fitness professionals, a group of health professionals, a group of experts are all sitting together and they're not on camera and they're not worried about getting canceled, I can tell you that the conversations are very different. Whoa. Bring that back. She's saying that behind the scenes, when the cameras are not rolling, the conversations, you know, with health and fitness professionals about this drug are very different. So I guess what she's saying is it's not all roses. And a group of fitness professionals, a group of health professionals, a group of experts are all sitting together and they're not on camera and they're not worried about getting canceled. I can tell you that the conversations are very different. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's let's just get into the next one. Uh, Oprah 
I think more than a year ago, came out and publicly said that she was not ever going to use a weight loss injection, that she was going to do it the natural way. And she made like a very bold statement about that. Now, recently, about a month ago, she came out and announced that, in fact, she is using a weight loss injectable. She did not use the name brand, but obviously it is a version of semaglutide, semaglutide, depending on how you pronounce it. I'm going to say semaglutide for the rest of this video, but regardless. Well, first of all, it doesn't surprise me that Oprah's on it. Her, she's the biggest yo-yo of all time. I mean, how many drugs can somebody be on? How many times can you lose 100 pounds and gain it again? We've seen her do this for decades. So no surprise there. Well, so the brand, we know that she by her own admission, is using now a weight loss injectable drug. And the press went crazy. The media went crazy. People called her a hypocrite. People were very, very angry. Even though she says she lost the majority of the weight herself, the, you know, the way that she intended to through diet and exercise and that she's the injection for maintenance. We don't know if there's a brand deal behind this, whatever the case may be. Interesting point she made. Is there a brand deal behind this? Because, you know, Oprah's been in deals with, I mean, I don't know, I don't know exactly, but she's been like Weight Watchers or it could have been Jenny Craig. She's, you know, always doing something, losing all this weight, gaining it, losing it again, gaining it. So maybe, maybe she does have a brand deal with one of these companies that are making this drug. We don't know if there's a brand deal behind this, whatever the case may be, why she's taking it, why she's decided to do it. It doesn't make sense to me that why people are so angry about this. How is it that it doesn't make sense that people are angry about it? It's Oprah. People listen to Oprah. So if, if, if she is on something or endorsing something, you know, people expect that whatever she says about it is truthful. So, you know, it is a big deal because Oprah is listened to. People listen to Oprah. It is true that Ozempic is only FDA approved for people who have type 2 diabetes, and it is offered at a lower dose than Wagovi. Wagovi is the same drug. Little First of all, I don't care about anything the FDA approves, okay? The FDA approved Oxycontin, too, and look how that ended up, all right? Seriously, an opioid epidemic where the Sackler family is paying billions in dollars for, you know, all the corruption there. So let's not really talk about the FDA, different pen. So that's the part that's trademarked. That's the part that's patented, but it's the same uh, semaglutide at a higher dosage that's been FDA approved for general weight loss, obesity. Now you're going to have a very hard time getting Wagovi if you just want to lose like 10 pounds or 15 pounds for your daughter's wedding. Wow. Well, the housewives on Bravo don't seem to have a very difficult time getting the drug. <laughs> so it's not really completely what she's saying, according to her, she's saying that it's not really approved. You know, you're going to have a very hard time if it's just, you know, five to 10 pounds that you need to lose. But somehow all these celebrities are on it and none of them are obese. Uh, if you don't have another comorbidity, it is very difficult to get your hands on these drugs at the moment. So I, again, I just want to say nobody should be taking medication away from people who truly need it, who are type two diabetic. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this woman. It, it almost seems like uh, it's a little bit clickbait-ish. You know, one minute you're saying that, you know that behind the scenes, the conversations about this drug are very, very different. So why aren't you letting us know what those conversations are? Come on. Isn't that why we're here watching this? I want to know the conversations that are going on behind the scenes to see what the real issues are with this drug and if it is even safe for these people. What we do know for sure, like we don't need any more studies, is that it is incredibly detrimental to your health and longevity to be clinically obese. Yeah, and what we also know is that it's a pretty basic, basic, and I'm talking basic solution. It's called calories in, calories out. Okay. There's nothing new under the sun. There's been miracle weight loss drugs going on for years. Look at Oprah. She's a great example. She's been on everything. Hydroxy cut this, that, all this junk. And what happens? She goes right back to where she started. Okay. There is no miracle cure. You have to discipline yourself. We have to educate children in school on how to eat properly, proper nutrition, 
I mean, it's not that deep. We, we know that carrying around all that extra weight, we, we know that that puts you at a higher risk of almost every, all cause mortality. We don't know all the risks yet associated with these GLP-1 agnus. However, the FDA has approved them. Here she goes with the FDA again. And they're doing so rapidly. In fact, they just rushed through approval for the use of drugs like Wagovi for weight loss in children as young as age 12. And they're now doing trials on children as young as age six. I don't know what to say. Okay, that's where it's out of hand. You're talking about children that are six years old. They're gonna approve this for six year olds that are obese. Okay, first of all, if a six year old is obese, the parents should be in big trouble, okay? The parents should be in big, big trouble. Let me, so let, I mean, what, how does a six-year-old get their hands on food? I mean, do they just take the keys from, you know, the kitchen and take a drive down to McDonald's and order, you know, three uh, number fours and extra, you know, I mean, this is absurd. If your child is obese, it's your fault. A six-year-old cannot be obese unless you are feeding that child food to make that child obese. When are parents going to take responsibility? No, they'd rather be on Instagram and, and, and TikTok scrolling, right? And give, and give their kid at six years old an injection in the stomach to lose weight? What is going on in this country? How could the FDA even approve that? Oh, that's right. They, pro they approved Oxycontin too. They said it was a miracle drug. My bad. Okay. Um, now... This next clip here is uh, Tucker Carlson. This is a clip from Tucker Carlson. And uh, he has a pharmaceutical executive, a former executive for the pharmaceutical companies. And his name is Callie Means. Now, he has a mouthful to say about Ozempic. Let's see what this is about. Where the rubber really hits the road is there is an all-out assault to convince us that this is the appropriate drug. Again, th this is the target market. This is why the stocks are popping and why Wall Street's going crazy. It's the biggest TAM, the biggest target market for any drug in American history. It's 80% of, of American adults, uh, but it's being- Wow, he's talking about stocks. It's gonna be interesting. Fast-tracked, you wouldn't believe this, but the American Academy of Pediatrics recently said that they recommend this as a first line of defense for teens. And now this lady just said the same thing. Uh, what was her name? The fitness expert, Shailene Johnson. She also said it was approved for teens and they're working on six year olds. We just saw that. So there's something to that if two people are saying it here. I mean, this is ridiculous, but clearly the stock market has something to do with it. Fast tracking a drug? Not, not smart. Uh, smart in the stock world maybe, but we'll see. For teens. And the study basing that decision for the American Academy of Pediatrics to say that every obese or overweight teen, which is 50%, should take this drug. 50%? 50%, did you hear him? He's saying that 50% of kids are obese. That is nuts. To say that every obese or overweight teen, which is 50%, should take this drug, was a 68-week study. 68 weeks? Hold on, we're talking about children here. So you tested a drug for 68 weeks and you're going to give it to teenagers and children as young as six years old? That was enough testing for you? This sounds like another Oxycontin scandal to me. We had a 68-week study for a lifetime recommendation to 50% of teens in America to, to receive these injections. Wait a minute, lifetime recommendation? So what they're saying here is that you have to be on this drug for the rest of your life. So let's start this at six and do it forever. What are these people insane? 50% of teens in America to, to receive these injections. That is the crazy, that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard in my life. You're talking about putting six year olds on a drug to lose weight. Six year olds. The only reason a six year old is overweight is because somebody is overfeeding that six year old. This is ridiculous. We're gonna give them an, a lifelong injection in the stomach? Uh, uh, something that was, uh, what, 68 weeks, he said? Are these people nuts? When are the parents gonna start standing up? 
I, I, I don't get it. Let's see what the next one says. You have a situation where uh, additionally, Novo Nordics, and this is reported, has given $30 million in direct bribes to obesity doctors. You would be hard pressed to find a doctor who treats obesity in this country who has not received some kind of donation, not not research grants, but direct consulting grants from Novo Nordics. Like just sending him cash? Exactly. So How we, can doctors take cash from drug makers? Oh, th- th- this, is, this is what's done. The drug makers spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year in direct cash payments to doctors. But you can't get the drug except with a script written by the doctor. Yeah, who, prescription. Who, 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 who take direct consulting fees from? How can that be legal? This is how, this is you know what you watch uh, things about the opioid crisis and how the opioid uh, completes the same playbook. Same playbook. Did you hear what he just said? What he's describing right here is exactly what was going on with OxyContin and the Sackler family. Okay, they were paying off doctors to tell people like coal miners that were injured. How sad that the drug was a miracle drug. It will take your pain away with zero side effects. Anybody that has not watched Dope Sick, it's on Hulu. Go watch it. Crucial, crucial series. Very sad. It seems like this is the next Dope Sick. Okay, let's see what else he's got to say. 18, and Dr. Robert Lustig, who's a hero of mine, has pointed this out an endocrinologist at uh, UCSF, the American Diabetes Association said that as long as you take your medications, you do not need to change your diet as a diabetic. So you literally have guidance from the American Heart Association, from the American Diabetes Association, now from the obesity industrial complex, saying that if you take these drugs, you're good. But that's a lie because there's never been a drug in American history for a chronic condition that has lowered the rate of that chronic condition. What's the cost of all that? Hold on a second. Sorry, Tucker. Remember Spooky Boo from earlier? Okay. Spooky Boo, the one that um, was feeling like she wanted to end her life on this drug. Do you remember what she said? She said that this drug was going to retrain her how to eat. Are you listening to this? This is what they're telling patients. They're telling patients that, oh, don't worry, you can still go to Friendly's and have, you know, a three ice cream sundaes, two burgers, you know, four times a day, hit McDonald's on the way home, get an apple pie, uh, you know. I mean, are you insane? This is nuts. This is nuts. A condition. What's the cost of all that? Just diabetes. Well, with diabetes, uh, this is the root cause. Again, it's a misnomer to see this as an isolated condition. Almost 100% of people with Alzheimer's have prediabetes or... I have to bring that back. Almost 100% of people with Alzheimer's has diabetes. Uh, so again, it's a misnomer to see this as an isolated condition, almost 100% of people with Alzheimer's have prediabetes or, or diabetes. Diabetes is one of the- Seriously? Alzheimer's is now called type three diabetes. The most highest indicator you can have for dementia or Alzheimer's is some kind of blood sugar dysregulation. Wow. Now, let me tell you something. Do you think that if they told Americans that, listen, if you don't get your diet in control, okay? Cause that's what, you know, pre-diabetic is. It's all diet. Okay, diabetes two, it's all diet, okay, type two diabetes. If they told you that if you don't get this in check, as you get older, it is going to be 100% guaranteed that you are going to have Alzheimer's. Do you think that people might change their diet? This is crazy. If you have normal fasting glucose levels, your chance of having any type of dementia is very, very low. Uh, d- dementia is, is highly tied. Again, I don't even like the word using the word diabetes. Our cells, diabetes is cellular dysregulation caused by our environment or food. Um, again, the majority of people in this country have some form of, of that happening inside their bodies because our environment, and this is unprecedented. So diabetes is really the root cause. But if you just take diabetes, you know, this is, this is one of the biggest line items in the U.S. budget. Um, we're spending, if you add up all the line items we're spending on healthcare, just, just to manage diabetes, it's more than the defense budget. What? Oh, he said, we're spending more than the defense budget 
just to control the diabetes problem in this country? Show me another country that's doing what we're doing. Seriously, this is ridiculous. Corporate greed. Um, we're training doctors, right? Medical schools, pharma companies, hospitals, doctors, nurses, insurance companies. They make money when people are sicker for longer periods of time. The way Bring that back. Training doctors, right? Medical schools, pharma companies, hospitals, doctors, nurses, insurance companies. They make money when people are sicker for longer periods of time. The way to do that is to silo conditions. That's, what, that's why Ozempic is so important because obesity is not a siloed condition. Obesity is a visible example that we are losing our way as Americans and treating that in a silo is, is just medically not going to work and it's happening because of corruption. So basically what he's saying is that, you know, you're sending your daughter or son to medical school and we're training doctors to keep us sick so that the pharmaceutical industries can continue to make money. I mean, for all we know, they have a cure for cancer. I mean, why would they cure it? Who knows what the profit margins are there? Pretty sad. That's why we have to take our health and our bodies and our lives in control of, for ourselves. We have to eat right. We have to, we have to change as Americans. America is just turned into like one obese, sick group of people. It is disgusting to the point that we're talking about six-year-olds getting on a medication that you have to take for your entire life to lose weight. Parents should be put in jail for stuff like that. That's insane. All right, let's get into the next one. So if Ozempic isn't the answer, what is? If you were an alien that came down to earth and saw what's happening in America, and I want to make this clear, it's happening specifically in America. What we need to- You hear that? It's happening specifically in America. Specifically in America. Nobody else is having issues like this. In America. What we need to do is doctors need to follow the science. Doctors need to, when somebody has a metabolic condition, explain to them and incentivize them to practice better eating, to exercise. People listen to doctors. When we were told the food pyramid to eat carbs, we ate carbs. When we were told to take vaccines, we took vaccines. When we were told to stop smoking, smoking raised plummeted. We need every doctor and every medical leader, and frankly, I hope leaders like Elon who care about human capital and, 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 and our potential to say, we need to unwind this and we need to get back to root causes in America and talk about food, talk about exercise, talk about sleep. You can transform your life. These policies would transform things. You can change your biomarkers in three months. Okay, this is what I have to say. Okay, about Ozempic and this new craze. Okay, the new dope sick is the way I see it. Only in America, okay, can you drive down the street, no matter where you are, not just in Manhattan, not just in New York City, I'm talking in, in Connecticut and uh, Oklahoma, wherever. You drive down the street, and on each side of the street, you've got a Popeyes, a KFC, a Taco Bell, a McDonald's, a Burger King, a Smash Burger, um, every kind of ice cream known to man. And then, and then even the pharmacies. You go into Dwayne Reed and CVS, they're selling ice cream, they're selling candy bars, 7 Eleven, pizzas, hot dogs, all night, 24 hours a day, candy, candy, candy. It's a sugar fest. This is what America's become. People in other countries do not eat this way, okay? And they do not feed their children this way. Mothers on TikTok selfieing, you know, this is, this is the new normal now. Instead of making a home-cooked meal for our families. This is why we have six-year-olds that are obese. Because people are lazy. Parents are lazy, period, you don't want to make a home-cooked, healthy meal for your child? No, you'd rather order Uber Eats McDonald's for a six-year-old so they can get addicted to chicken nuggets. This is a disgrace. Now we're at the point where who knows where this is going to end up. Yeah, it's all, it's all great now, but look at You've got people like Spooky Boo talking about she wants to end her life on this drug. You've got doctors being paid off by the pharmaceutical companies to push this on to patients. You've got Hollywood 
taking an injection in the stomach to lose five pounds. We need to do better. And here's the craziest thing of all. Being overweight is in our total control. We control that. Nobody else does. We ourselves. We choose what we put in our body. Think about that. I hope you liked it. I'm Debraba. See you next time.